Oh, hey, 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 happy, happy, happy Friday. That's right, it's Friday. How's it going? Uh, welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing? Um, yeah, welcome to the stream. Uh, Friday, you're probably wondering, hey, what's going on? Uh, why are you doing this on Friday? I talked about it a little bit last week, and I think the week before, but uh, just changing things up a little bit. My my schedule has changed. I'm, uh, I, uh, I don't know if, uh, I mean, some of you guys know this, but uh, I talked about this, uh, yeah, last week and the week before, but I'm I'm kind of working for myself now, so I I had to switch uh, switch things around so that I can do this during I guess my work week because uh, this is technically my work week. Hey, thank you so much for the follow. I'll get into events and stuff like that, but uh, so yeah, so I'm just changing it up. I I thought, hey, why not uh, 11 on Friday uh, Central Time? So I think that's a it might be a little more inclusive. We'll see. We'll see. The jury's still out. <laughs> I'll have to look at the analytics. Last week, yeah, I mean, attendance was up, and so we'll see about this week. And if you guys have specific comments or feedback on timing, let me know. But I do know that three CST on Saturday is tough for a lot of people, for a lot of people, not not just those in the U.S. that you know want to have uh, a weekend, but also those outside of the U.S. on a different time zone. It ends up being really late, so... Anyways, uh, man, welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing? Uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna talk uh, talk tech. If you're new to the stream, welcome. I appreciate you being here. Um, it's a little bit different than you know most other channels. Uh, at least my other channels, my other avenues for for reaching out to you guys and connecting. Uh, it's pretty laid back. We talk uh, talk tech, talk uh, things we're we're working on, things we're struggling with, things we're excited about, uh, things related to home lab, networking, whatever, whatever, you name it, uh, we'll talk about related to tech. Uh, and uh, well, if, if you have something you want to share, uh, yeah, throw it in the chat and I'll get to it. Uh, I have a little, a new uh, message ticker thing. I'm going to see if this works. I, th I think this is going to work a lot better. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but anyways, uh, if you have something you want to share, throw it in chat. I'd love to know what you're working on. Um, what I've been working on uh, this past week, oh man, uh, where do I even start? So this was, I think, my first, like, well, <laughs> it gets kind of weird because we have the 4th of July this week, but uh, yeah, so this week, yeah, worked for myself and I've been doing a lot of administrative stuff. Um, yeah, it's a lot of administrative stuff along with with kind of working on videos, writing scripts. This is this is kind of weird. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, anyways, I uh, I, I finally I, I finally got email hosting no longer just on Gmail and and uh, just doing some stuff to make things a little more official. So that's that's what I plan on doing, uh, and that's what I've been doing. And then I, I totally get lost like in the weeds with a lot of different stuff. So. So anyways, I, I'd love to know what you're working on. What I'm working on right now is, is kind of boring. It's all back office stuff along with, with video stuff. More content coming up. So <laughs> email server pain. I hear you. It is, but uh, it, was actually, it was actually pretty painless with uh, the route I went. Uh, probably not a uh, popular opinion. Actually, it's probably a super popular opinion, but not probably a super popular opinion with, with uh, self-hosting folks. So, uh, but, uh, but yeah, we can talk about that. If you have questions, toss it in the chat. I'd, lo I'd love to know. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, if you have something you want to share, throw it in the chat. Let's let's uh, let's talk about it. I, I'm only going to run for roughly an hour. So about uh, about a quarter after, uh, I think, is when I finally hit the go button. So we'll uh, we'll do the same thing uh, a quarter after. We'll we'll kind of we'll kind of wrap it up unless unless things are getting uh, <laughs> wild or hectic. Not that they would, but uh, I'll, I'll just go roughly an hour. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So. So yeah, if you have something you want to share, throw it in chat. Let's uh, let's talk about it. Hey, first up, uh, let's let's go into our uh, events. So there were a couple things that happened right before the stream started. Let's see, let's see, right here. Uh, BJ uh, BG Hubako, I'm going with that. <laughs> uh, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it, uh, Raz Raz Kazaz. That's what I'm saying, and that's what I'm going with. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. SSSS one two three four. Uh, probably a bot or someone who doesn't really care about Twitch all that much. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. PC Geek resub tier one. Thirty four months. Thirty four months streak. Thirty four months. Let's go. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for being here, and thanks for man over. Uh, Man, that's three, oh, three, I got to do maths. Maths is, is hard, uh, uh, pre, pre noon, <laughs> but almost three years, man. Almost three years. So close. So close. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for all you do. Uh, X A one, A Ron, A Ron, A A Ron, Aaron. Uh, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. So thank you. Thank you. 
So yeah, uh, let's let's see if let's see first who was here first. I I, I can tell you who was here first, kind of kind of sorta. I think it was Sigor. Sigor, thanks for thanks for being here first. I don't have it in my other chat thing, but yeah. Anyways, I'll I'll fix that because I know what's going on. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Man, this is uh, let's see. New tool. Is this is this is this gonna show? We showing this or what? We doing this? Let me <laughs> give me two seconds because this better work because uh, click to show this message. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's better. Sigor, hey everyone. Yes, yeah, so, all right. This is gonna work. I just got to figure out. I, I have new buttons, new tools, new stuff. So I got to figure this out. But this this should look a little bit better. We're gonna see avatars this time. We're gonna see emotes. I hope too. So, anyways. Um, but yeah, hey, Sigor was here first. Thanks for being here, man. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Let's get it. Let's get into some of this. Let's see. Uh, this is me testing. This is me testing. Uh, Scoo Cali. Scoo Cali says, um, let's see. Hey, hey, what's going on a stream this early on a Friday? Yeah, it is. It's uh stream on a Friday. I, uh, like I said, I'm switching stuff up. I'm trying to like, you know, I don't know, fit stuff into my work week, which now this is all part of my work week because I'm, uh, Working for myself. I don't know how else to put it. I don't know how else to put it. I'm doing a, a bunch of stuff. One of them is is more more content. So, <laughs> uh, is this a Friday stream? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is for sure. Uh, Friday stream. Uh, he's now on Fridays. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna switch to Fridays temporarily. We'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna switch to Fridays just temporarily. Uh, if it works out for most people, I'm gonna keep doing it. If not, uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll continue it adjust. Um, that's kind of, that's kind of my thing. I just, uh, I'm going to see what works and, uh, to, in order to see what works, you gotta, you gotta test things out. Uh, you gotta experiment sometimes. So my experiment is, Hey, how does, how does Friday mornings work? <laughs> it's a gig changing it up a little bit. That's right. Hey all, how's it going? Hi all. Um, let's see, let's go to this one. Uh, never fear. Boris is here. Ah, oh, I love that. I have people's avatars now. Thank you. Look at that. Look at that avatar. It looks beautiful. It's not centered. I need, I need to do some CSS work. It's not. This isn't my uh, final form for these messages, but it's getting pretty close. A lot better than it was before. Uh, never fear, Boris is here. Hey, are you eating and hydrating? Um, kinda, kinda, sorta. Um, hydrating, yes. Uh, I, 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 you guys know I love bubbly water. I found this new one. I think uh, Waterloo is now doing uh, these kind of mixture flavors. They've always kind of been, I don't know, a purist. I don't know, a purist kind of bubbly water. Uh, but now I'm trying this ginger citrus twist, and it's it's pretty good. Like I thought it was going to be better than what it turned out to be, um, but I'm still pleasantly surprised. I was I was hoping for a little more lemon and lime. But anyways, uh, hydrated, yes. Eating, no. No, I know um, I haven't eaten a thing yet today, so <laughs> that's kind of my thing. I uh, either skip lunch or or uh, or eat lunch, but I I never never drink eat. I don't drink breakfast. I don't think most people do. Uh, well, maybe, maybe, but no, I I did not today. Uh, let's see. Um, I have to figure out how this works. Okay, so this works a little bit. Uh, that looks uh, that looks a little bit like I have contracts. But hey, let's see. Uh, I just updated my. Let's see. I just ate up. Ate it. I just updated my home lab. Uh, VCSA. Uh, and it bricked again. I don't know what a VCSA is. I don't know what a VCSA is, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry it bricked. Hopefully you can you can recover from it. Randoneering. Look at that profile pic. That is that that's got LinkedIn all over it, all over it. <laughs> I, I I think it is LinkedIn too because we're connected on LinkedIn. But that's uh that's pretty pro, man. That's pretty pro. Randoneering. Uh, getting getting this RTL SDR radio to intercept my Davis weather station readings so I can publish them on the net. And in Grafana, awesome, man. I know that you do uh, you do a lot of uh, uh, weather readings. I would love to have a, a mini weather station at some point because I'm, I'm, I'm totally into the weather too. Uh, but, uh, but awesome, man. I would love to see it. I would love to see it when you get it going uh, because, man, it, uh, I'm, I'm super interested in that stuff for sure. For sure. I've already found one thing that I do not like with this tool that I'm using. It's the auto scroll. But I'll... Uh, <laughs> I'll uh, figure out how to how to yeah it says chat pause but nah chat's not paused anyways I I gotta figure out this auto scroll uh and maybe maybe yeah let's see uh just don't move chat there we go uh let's see uh chubby panda uh might have to dive headfirst into Kubernetes to replace my Docker compose setup man that sounds like a weekend 
actually sounds sounds like a career. <laughs> sounds like a career move. No, it's uh, you know, it's 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 I, I at least for me that was the like kind of the next evolution of doing stuff. And I know people will say, well, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get this, you're not gonna get that. It's super complicated. There's overhead. I I get all that. But for me uh, personally, it was a it was a great move for me personally and professionally. To do that because uh, then I got to uh, then I got to see what Kubernetes was all about and you know manage it in the safety of my my own environment and blow it up and destroy it in the safety of my own environment. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm a huge fan. Um, you have to be you have to be ready. <laughs> you have to be ready. And uh, what I would say is just don't go all in. Don't go. Uh, well, you can go all in, but I would say like spin up another environment to to test it in first. And a lot of people, you know, I, I, this question comes up quite a bit, like, Hey, uh, Hey, how hard is it to, to, to use Kubernetes and in, instead of Docker, it, you know, it's different, different tooling, different mindset. Uh, but for, uh, a lot of it, uh, a lot of it is the same when you start to think about load balancers, maybe load balancers or networking, I should say, uh, storage, uh, things like that containers, how, how you manage them, health checks. Um, a lot of it's kind of the same, but I would say like get Kubernetes running somewhere first before you even decide you're going to make the switch just so you can kind of play with it and kind of understand how it works. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, I would love to know. I would love to know your uh, your take and uh, what you end up doing and how it goes. Uh, let's see. Whoa, whoa, here we go. Uh, I just read that one. So here we go. Whoa, Crack Kitty, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Look at that. Look at that. Milky Way Galaxy. I was expecting some kind of cat. <laughs> it's so nice to see your guys' avatars now because for years, I haven't seen them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they don't pop up in chat and they don't, uh, they don't, they didn't show up in my old one. So let's see. Whoa, another Friday stream. I'm not working and I'm in Colorado because of course I'm not home. Haha. <laughs> hey, everyone. Yeah, good to see you. How, how are you doing in, in Colorado, man? How, how's Colorado? I, I saw you were, I, I think, yeah, I think it was last night or the day before you said you were in between, I think in a layover flying there. So hopefully it's going well, man. Hopefully it's going well. Can I double click this? That This would be great if I could just, just straight up double click this to replace. It. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll stop, uh, struggling with the tool because I'm going to struggle with the tool. <laughs> I'll stop calling out my struggles with the tool. Uh, it's yeah, I, I won't even get into tooling and struggling with tooling. And I spend so much time struggling with tooling and I stop to learn, stop learning the actual thing, but that's a thing too. Uh, muddy sup, man. Uh, Friday stream again. Glad I uh, need a distraction from work. All right. I'll, uh, be sure to send your post, your, uh, cost center into, uh, and <laughs> into Twitch so I can charge your uh, continuing education budget or uh, cost center and send my bill. No, I'm kidding. Uh, let's see. Uh, Flowdash uh, running two running 12 strand MPO cables just because work was throwing them away. I don't even know what 12 strand MPO cables are. I'm showing showing my noobness when it comes to cabling. Uh, but man, uh, awesome. Uh, I mean, I, I assume if you're if you're picking them up. That means they're 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 worth something, at least to you, for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh, will this thing stop scrolling? All right, let's see. Flowdash. Uh, I need to just like I need to just add all of these to the queue. I I kind of understand how this thing works. I don't have it fully set up. I guess the way I want it set up yet. Uh, so it keeps jumping. Um, let's see. Flowdash. Ooh, I I want to. Uh, Ooh, I almost just want to like do this and like auto add all of these to this queue. So anyways, I'm going to clear all. Oh man, this tool. All right. I should have, I should have tested it a little bit more. Chat pause. Why don't you chat pause? All right. Let me, give me two seconds. Cause maybe I can just do this here. Um, flow dash. Oh my gosh. So, so the way that this tool works, is kind of weird. It's like you have messages that come in and then you can add them to your queue to read them off screen. Hey, thanks, thanks guys for the follow. Uh, Ca Captain My Mythic, 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 uh, Valorant, 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 <laughs> and Wu Man and DZ Dizzletron, Dizzletron. I like it. Uh, thanks for the follow, guys. Appreciate it. Welcome. Uh, anyways, the way that this tool works, it puts things. It shows chat, and then it, I can choose whether or not to put things in a queue. Um, but then chat continues to scroll. So it's like, okay, well, uh, I got to figure this out. I got to figure this out. Can I, can I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to click on some buttons really quick in these settings 
just to see if I can like always pause chat. I don't want chat to scroll. Automatically put highlighted message in the into the queue on the on deck queue. Automatically put highlighted no. Broadcaster skip. No. Administrator uh show uh oh my goodness. Yeah, there is there isn't a setting. Maybe I should just like request this feature from this thing. I, I that's that's exactly what I want. Just like either put everything in the queue or or just don't scroll this chat, man. Uh hide single word messages. No, single word ah, alright, alright. Let's go. I'm I'm gonna find it. Uh and then I'll just like be cognizant of where I am at in the scroll bar. Oh my gosh. Friday stream. So I'm I, I do apologize if I uh skip over your message. Uh let's see. Flow dash. Uh, I have an interview with AWS in a few, which should be fun. Hey, congratulations. That's awesome. What, I wonder what part of AWS, uh, but awesome. Uh, seems to be a good company to work for. <laughs> Big company. Uh, they run like, I don't know, 70, 80% of the web. So I'm sure I'm sure there's uh, quite a bit uh, 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 opportunities there, but awesome. Flowdash, congratulations, man. I, I hope it goes well. I'm sure it'll go well. I'm sure it'll go well. Uh, let's see. Um... Ooh, I just want to like click on all of these. Um, Scoo Cali, this I missed this one. Scoo Cali, uh, trying to set up a private Docker repo, but getting a blob unknown. So I guess more research in order to get it up and running. Yeah. Um, so I haven't done this. I've I, I know that like Harbor exists, and maybe that's what you're using. So Harbor, you know, is is a private uh, self-hosted. I should say self-hosted container registry. Um, where you can where you can host your own container images. I think it's backed by S3 or or object storage. So I I assume it's something with that. Maybe yeah. I'm just guessing. I'm guessing. I'm I'm guessing you're using Harbor. And then on top of that, I'm guessing you're using Minio for object storage. And that's where the disconnect is. You should give that a shot. I'm I'm just totally guessing. <laughs> totally guessing. Totally guessing. Um. Also have an interview. Ah, yeah, I know I got there. Uh, you could do it. Uh, let's see. Ooh, uh, let's see. Salvarius. Let's. Oh, I love that. Look at that sunset. Ooh, that's so nice. Uh, second bonus of the day. The first is being canceled site visit this morning. All right, I'm the second bonus. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> oh man, this this tool. Uh, Friday. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, Cowface. Cowface Dev. I like it. Uh, been a long time YouTube viewer. Nice to catch a stream for the first time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, welcome. Welcome. I'm sorry I'm struggling with this tool. Hopefully, I'll get things straightened out here in a little bit. Bacon. Oh, man. Bacon Hawkinator. Dude, how's it going? Thanks for the sub. Ten, ten months. Always first bonus in my book. LOL. Dude, thank you. Bacon, how's it going, man? I haven't seen you in a while. I, I, I'm wondering how you've been doing. Uh, I've seen some of your messages in the other Discord channel and small streamers, man. And uh, even my wife asked how you were. I think like about a week and a half ago, she asked how you were doing. So hopefully you're doing good, man. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go here. Um, this this thing. There's a lot of lot of well wishes. Uh, whoop! It's been a while. Glad I could join. Good to see you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, oh man. Read only Friday. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here's 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 maybe. Uh, <laughs> Phantom Way, read only Friday. Oh man, I, I struggle with that one a lot. Uh, like I get it from like an infrastructure point of view and a support point of view. I, I totally get it. Uh, and I, I, you know, I work for companies a lot of times where we had, you know, we had code freezes uh, for entire months. Think, think big retail. Think when would you do that? You know, Black Friday ish type stuff. Um, but man, I, I, you know, I go back and forth with that one because like. As a developer, I want to get my changes out. I want to get my fixes out. I want to get my features out. Um, but then, you know, and then I, I start to think, well, from a support perspective, from an ops perspective, I don't want things to break. If things are working fine now, I don't want them to break <laughs> after this new deployment. So, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. But uh, I I had to switch. I, I was like that for a long time. But after working for a couple startups, I was just kind of like, well, let's deploy everything on Friday. I'm the one supporting it, so I'll be the one fixing it. So, <laughs> I, I guess it it comes with uh, I guess it comes with like how how your company scales. I think at least for me it was uh, when I was uh, you know work for a company of what two hundred thousand. I was like, oh, yeah, we better be careful because someone else is going to be you know supporting this thing or or get the alert first. But when I went to a company of three, four, five, thirteen hundred, yeah, 
let it rip. <laughs> let it rip because it's coming to me anyways. <laughs> not that I, you know, not that I didn't have things in place anyways, but yeah. Yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. Greetings from Germany. Frank, hey, thanks. for Greetings from Germany. Uh, let's see. Mafni. All right, let's go. Mafni. Oh, yeah. Mafni's awesome. Avatar. I'm going to keep my keep my cursor over here because if I do then it doesn't scroll so uh what do I think of podman uh I think it's I think it's fine I think it's fine like I have nothing against podman uh so if you're not familiar with podman it's a it's another runtime for for docker it's a docker compliant docker api compliant runtime basically a drop-in replacement for just the runtime piece of docker uh, less resources, not all the tooling, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to do one thing and do that well. And so a lot of Docker's, <laughs> a lot of like what Docker does has been, uh, broken out or chipped away by all of these other projects to provide, you know, just this one piece. If you think, uh, building containers or, or, or you know, building containers, you know, this thing called Canico came out and there's uh build that came out and these open source projects that want to replace that one thing you know podman is an alternative for for docker the runtime yeah oci compliant uh piece the oci piece of of docker and so uh you know i i've used it a little bit um it actually uh, uh unify uses that on their uh, a lot of their i should say their udm pro and udm se to to run some containers i mean they run containers for for their apps and they use podman i i totally get it um for me personally, yeah, go for it. I would say if you want a smaller, lighter runtime and you're familiar enough with it, yeah, go for it instead of installing the full blown Docker. Yeah, I'd, I'd say go for it. Um, and just, but I mean, if you're asking about Podman, you you definitely know, I guess, where the landmines are. Maybe you don't, but you understand what it's there and what it's there to do. So, um, but I've, you know, I've, I've kind of, I, I use Docker a lot for, uh, I still use it for building. I still use it uh, uh, for, I guess you should say, like my my lower environment. So I, I have Docker only hosts where I test out a lot of my containers and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, so I'm still running Docker there. So I I have no I have no no problems with it whatsoever. I think it's cool. I hope it sticks around. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's about all I got. I've used it before for sure, for sure. But I don't use it in my day to day. <laughs> email server pain yeah that's that's kind of that's kind of me uh, uh that's kind of me too uh that's what i've been going through this this past three days uh so i've been setting up uh <laughs> email for a little bit uh the last couple of days and migrating getting in an email server setup now i shouldn't say setup i mean so i'm using the cloud i'm using google workspaces it got easy it got easy um and that's why i say it's, it's probably not a popular opinion for people who are self-hosting but it's a super popular opinion for people hosting email in general. So yeah, Google Workspaces went that route. Super easy to do. Google made it super easy. I could import a Gmail account, which already exists, migrate everything over. It was it was pretty painless. But you know, in I'm like in that in between stage where okay, emails are going to my old email. Now I need to forward and need to make sure that things are getting blocked. And then I got to set up. DMARC records and DKIM records. I don't know. All of, all of these things I haven't had to do before that have been set up for me automatically. So I'm, I'm learning a lot about uh, email security with DNS and text records. So it's it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then importing and exporting mail and all this, all this other stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's cool, but it lacks some features. Uh, cool Docker stuff like networking. I know it exists, but it's too complicated with the Docker Compose to find network. Hey, Phantom Way, that's, I guess that's a good point. I didn't think about that piece. So so the, uh, the actual networking piece and all the other pieces that I think uh, it, it it tries to use. Uh, but yeah, good point. Good point. Exchange Online. No, not Exchange Online. <laughs> not using Exchange Online. Uh, that's, uh, I think, Think what AA run? Sorry, I got I, I, I look it up. Uh, Aaron, uh, no Exchange Online. No, I'm not using Exchange Online. I, I I did I did consider Office 365, but uh, it, it was more expensive. I'll just put it out there. It was more expensive. I was already using Gmail and uh, Workspaces for Google. Uh, yeah, it was half the price for a single user, and I'm like, okay, that's me. <laughs> so yeah, for sure, it's uh, I I did I did consider I, I I mostly considered all all email hosting, but at the end of the day, I wanted to spend the least amount of money and have the least amount of overhead, and you know, run on something that's super critical. I did consider uh, emailing or emailing, 
self-hosting my own mail server and that went out the door really quick. Uh, not because of the complexity, because the criticality, I guess I would just say. Uh, my email that I use for business is pretty critical and I don't want to have to worry about it. And for, you know, for for <laughs> pennies a day, I could I could uh, have someone else host that for me. So, oh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm I'm a, oh man, I'm a, I'm a Tato di Mist. I'm just making this up. Uh, working on setting up a sure, a sure infrastructure for a client. I don't know what a sure in, in, infrastructure is for a client, but sounds sounds awesome. Maybe it's complicated. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Uh, let's see. Crack Eddie. Uh, wild. Hectic. You're gonna need <laughs> to keep Maffney under control, Tim. I know. <laughs> I know. You gotta you gotta watch him. You gotta watch him. You gotta watch him. You gotta keep an eye on him. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, stop jumping text. My, oh man, Snoop, uh, Snoopy, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Uh, going from PF Sense to BIOS uh, is a rough road. I figured uh, CLI for everything else. <laughs> Might as well do it for my router also. Yeah, he, li he likes pain. We know this. We know that Snoopy likes pain. Nah, I'm kidding. Nah, I'm kidding. He, he says he does, but uh, he I think he likes to learn and try new things. Uh, but awesome. So, uh, yeah, so PFSense to BIOS, I've seen it, uh, you know, they're, uh, it's, a uh, you know, open source. Um, I, they're trying to do, uh, not trying to, but they are doing IAC. So infrastructure as code, uh, with, with, with BIOS, with your router, with your firewall. Um, and, uh, they only have APIs to configure stuff. I think they have some UI that they're working on, but, uh, you better get familiar with their APIs or, or using some, you know, Terraform or something to configure it. But that's awesome. You'll have to let me know how that goes. Uh, I, I don't want to say, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't sound, I mean, it, it sounds painful if you haven't done infrastructure's code, but you've done a ton of IAC. So you've done a lot of infrastructure's code. I know that, uh, I know that you'll figure it out. Hey, the alt F4 stream. Hey, thanks for the right dope. 89 viewers. Whoa, let's go. All that four. How's it going? Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Welcome, everyone. If uh, if you're new to the channel, I assume you are. Hey, thanks. Thanks for being here. Uh, we talk about uh, tech stuff, a lot of self-hosting stuff, a lot of network infrastructure, coding, you name it. Hit all the buzzwords. Uh, that's what we talk about. And uh, I try to go through a lot of messages and we just talk about it. Uh, we either we're either venting or complaining or praising a lot of things in tech. <laughs> Uh, but we try to keep a positive note on it, and we try to talk. Uh, we try to limit it to tech too, because we're bombarded with other stuff outside of here. So awesome! But uh, but Snoopy, I, I know you'll figure it out if you if you've been doing infrastructure as code, so you got this down. Uh, and I know that uh, I know that you'll figure it out. So I was saying it might be painful if you've never done infrastructure as code before, but you have done it. Hey, crack kitty, dude! Thanks for the bits. Appreciate it, man. Uh, don't read the. All right, don't read this out loud too late. <laughs> uh, just a bit to get the, yeah. Thank you, dude, I appreciate it. I did read it out loud, at least the first part, but I appreciate it, dude. Thanks, Crack Kitty, thanks for the bit, appreciate it. Um, let's see, uh, let's let's go back into this this scrolly thing that's scrolling too much. Hey, thanks for the follow, guys. Appreciate it, Den, Denzil uh, Sar Sargasso. Thanks for the follows, appreciate it, appreciate it. Um, let's see. Let's go back to uh where we were and crack hitty snoop. All right, going PF Sense. Boris, what did I miss? Uh draft emergency on a Friday. No, we're just we're just here. Uh Friar Duck. Friar Duck. I gotta keep that one highlighted. Friar Duck says, Say, hey, uh, my unraid server's motherboard died the other day, and I'm still making sure everything works after swapping in the replacement. Awesome, man. Uh whoa, that's tough. That's tough when your when your motherboard dies for something like Unraid or your NAS. And on top of that, I, I think you might be doing software raid there. So that might be even tough, tough er if you don't get the same motherboard. Um, but I assume you did. So awesome, I, I hope it works out. Uh, and I hope you don't run into any weird stuff like, hey, you created this software raid with this controller and it had some ID and now you can't import your volumes. I'm sure, I'm sure Unraid's figured all that out, but I hope it goes well. Uh, with those types of things, it's kind of like uh, it's it's binary for me. It's like it either works or it doesn't work. And so if you've been able to turn it on and <laughs> and see all your volumes there, or your 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 array, then I, I think you're in good spot. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, uh, the the wind doctor, the wind doctor. Let's go with this. The the wind doctor. How do I get this into the queue? Do I double click? Yeah, I do. 
Okay. So weird. Mm. All right, I'm going to figure out this tool after this stream. But uh, at this very moment, trying to debug some Fortran code uh, that simulates wind turbines. I just tuned in for some distractions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, Fortran code uh, that simulates wind turbines. That is that is, that is wild. That is wild. I, I, I don't even know what Fortran code looks like. I mean, I've heard of it. I don't even know what it looks like. I have no idea. I couldn't even tell you if it's... I couldn't even tell you if it's object-oriented or not. <laughs> Man, that is uh, that is right. Uh, but man, uh, well, don't let me distract you too much because uh, wind turbine sounds pretty, pretty, um, pretty important. Sounds like government work. Sounds like government work. Old code, uh, uh, energy related. Sounds like government or, or 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 a private contractor working for a government. I'm just speculating. <laughs> a A Ron is right. <laughs> all right, I got that right. All right, all right. Hey, was it first again? No, Sigor, you were you were long. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, that looks awesome. PC geek, that looks awesome. Love the new chat overlay thingy. Thank you. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I stumbled on it. I, I've I've got to tune it a little bit, but this is this is already way better outside of just like the scroll, the scrolling thing going on. So, yeah. Uh, a A Ron. Uh, I I eat at <laughs> once a day, most days. Hey, I'm I'm kind of there with you. I, I do that a lot. Um, I, I don't know. Um, when I'm working on stuff and I'm hyper-focused, I forget about food. I usually have water here or something. But, I, yeah, I, I usually just don't eat. Um, it's funny. I, I've done that more um, now that I work from home more often uh, or almost always. Uh, when I when I went to the office, it was like you, everyone had a set lunchtime. And, you know, I there were a lot of days where I could just keep going, but everyone was going to lunch. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll go to lunch. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I hear you. I'm just here for the algorithm. Hey, thank you. Thanks for being here for the algorithm. I love it. Yeah. Keep a tab open. <laughs> uh, Sigor, uh, did you get some new, did you get some new threads? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. I did check out threads. Uh, I assume you mean the app. Um, yeah, I did. I, I, I checked it out. I, I'm on there. Uh, interesting. Uh, so, so first of all, yeah, there's so many things to say about threads. I'll just brain dump really quick. Wow. Like, I don't know. Uh, I, I should say Meta, their parent company had like, I don't know, 30, 40 million signups in 24 hours. I thought it was. It was crazy, crazy numbers. Uh, that number is just, I, I can't even comprehend. I mean, it's hard to even know like what successful is on signups. I mean, I think 1 million would be good, but they are crazy numbers. They did a lot of things right, I will say, with the signup process, with the whole, like, hey, import your Instagram account, uh, preserve your name, preserve your followers, one click and get signed in. Pretty interesting, pretty awesome. I will say it's kind of a little more confusing on what you do there. You know, it's like, okay, you can post images, videos, text. Then what's Instagram for? Is it just reels now? Who knows? And then on top of that all, it's it's basically like a skin on Facebook and everybody's like back in it. So yeah, it's it's awesome. Uh I I, I think it's cool. Um I think it's cool Twitter has some competition. We'll see where it goes. I mean, is it is this just like the hype train or is is it is it gonna is it gonna keep going? So I I don't know. I don't know. Uh but yeah, I'm not uh I mean I uh, me being, you know, me being in social media or, you know, having to uh I, I, you, um, I don't know. As, as someone who creates content, you, you kind of got to be where people are. So yeah, I'm there. I'm there. We'll see how it goes. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited about, uh, starting yet another channel to, to, to grow on. It's cool. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but <laughs> at the same time, it's like, I keep, I, I've started over on so many, what I, you know, there's Mastodon, there's multiple versions of Mastodon. There's, you know, there's, uh, uh, blue sky there's you know there's all kinds of competitors now it's like it's getting super crowded and like you know and and at least being you know in in uh, creating content tech content i gotta like kind of i gotta be where people are so whether i like it or not i mean that's just kind of the name of the game for me so i don't know so I, i'm there we'll see we'll see how it goes uh vcsa equals vcenter server appliance okay server appliance okay gotcha so it's a vcenter Server plans. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, VC, VCA, uh, TGAIF. I just saw the notification. Yeah, I didn't even think about TGIF. Oh, I like it. I like it. 
Oh, let's see. Uh, Crack Kitty, I forgot to post in the Discord. I got a new full-size rack used for free. Awesome. Came with one PDU. Oh, I got to sit up for this message. This is a long one from Crack Kitty. I got to get over this one. <laughs> uh, I came with one PDU. Awesome. Uh, I came with one PDU. A UPS, an expanded battery. Uh, both seem to have dead batteries, so not 100% sure they work. But when I get back from Colorado, I'm going to move everything over from the homemade rack to the new big toys. Hey, that is awesome. That uh, that, that sounds awesome. Uh, the good news is, uh, you know, aftermarket batteries, are if they're lead acid, I assume they are, are relatively cheap. Um, so that's pretty cool because most of the time you're paying for the, like, the controller piece, the housing piece. Uh, but awesome, man. So, yeah, PDU, UPS, expanded battery, awesome. Awesome. I see. I see a lot of battery <laughs> buying uh, in your future, and even even if they even if they're not a hundred percent dead, uh, it's it's relatively cheap to replace just batteries. So awesome, man. Sounds awesome. I'm I'm there with you. Uh, oh man, I got to go back here before it jumps again. Ironically, I'm about to start a DevOps job, so it'll work <laughs> to my advantage. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations, Chubby Panda, on on starting a DevOps job. So yeah. I, Awesome. So yeah, building, I agree that building, you know, uh, building things at home definitely helps out, uh, definitely helps out with, uh, with your job. If that's what you do. And I would say like, even if it's not with your job, you know, I, I, I'm a software engineer by day. Well, that kind of changed. <laughs> I was two weeks ago. Uh, now it's still part of my, my, um, my work day, my work week, I should say, but not as much. And so, yeah, it, it, it's helped me. I mean, I, I mean, I've been a software engineer for years. Um, it definitely helped out when I moved, and uh, well, it helped out when I worked for larger companies because, I, you know, there were, sometimes there was a gap in that knowledge where people maybe didn't understand CI/CD, pipelines, Kubernetes, Do even Docker. You know, it, it working on uh, software development or even app development. Um, so it helped out there, even in larger companies and on small companies, it really helped because then, you know, then, you, you know, in smaller companies, you usually have, uh, uh, a lot more responsibilities or have a lot more visibility into to what's going on. And so I think, uh, learning, you know, that helps as well. So anyways, uh, yeah, it, it's helped me a ton and, it, and, and it's helped me do this. I mean, <laughs> uh, if I didn't have a home lab, I, I'd, I, I wouldn't be here right now, uh, I don't think. So <laughs> I'd probably be, I don't know. I, I honestly wouldn't probably be on Twitch anymore if I didn't have a home lab and do tons of tech stuff at home. So it's it's pretty cool. It's uh, it's it's uh, provided a lot for me, I should say. I should say. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, been revamping my, uh, so Vumin, uh, been revamping my home networking uh, and I had a bit of, I have a, oh, sorry, my home networking. And if I had a bit for every time I lock myself out of my own network, I'd have a gigabit. I like it. I like it. I've, I've done that a couple times. Uh, I've locked myself out of, uh, I've locked myself out of my firewall, which is kind of the worst thing you could do because then you have to like physically plug in or, you know, or, or go into a terminal on it. Uh, and I have locked myself out of, yeah, I've locked myself out of my UDM before. I've locked all of my devices out of my own network before. I've been there. I've been there. But uh, fortunately, it's it's been pretty, pretty okay. And then I unintentionally lock myself out of other networks when I join, uh, say, a wireless network that's on a different VLAN. And I realize, like, oh, why can't I do anything on this VLAN? And then I realize I'm on the wrong VLAN. And then I'm like... I'm a, you know, total face palm, but at the same time, I'm like happy because then I know my firewall rules worked. <laughs> so it's, uh, you yeah, know, it's, uh, yeah, it's double edged sword, but yeah, that's, that is awesome. I, I know how it goes. I've locked myself out. I've been pretty, pretty good lately on not locking myself out. I'm, I've been, I've been doing okay in that department. Let's see, uh, Zendi, uh, following last week's comment, I figured out my Windows 11 Proxmox port. The problem with the GPU was not on the GPU at all. I should not have mapped, passed through all the RAM and cores in the VM with PCI pass through the host crashes. Oh yeah. Okay. So, uh, so last week, I think you were talking about, Hey, I can't, I can't pass through this GPU to this Windows 11 machine. And so you're saying I figured out it, the problem with the GPU was not on the GPU at all but I should not have passed through all the RAM and cores to the VM with PCI pass through the host crashes. Oh, you, you, you post, 
Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> you uh, you pass through all the RAM in the cores. Oh, well, uh, yeah, that, that doesn't seem good. I mean, I, I would think you could still over-provision stuff, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, three nights at the Red Rocks for a concert. Can't wait, Crack Kitty. I knew, I knew you were, I knew you were traveling. Didn't know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who, yeah. He, who's he going to see? Is he going to see Bieber? Yeah. Is he, is he, is he going to see Bieber Salveris? You ask him. He, we know. We know. He, he let us know. <laughs> Oh, let's see. Uh, Three Port Shop Express. How's it going? Haven't seen your name in a little bit. Uh, in a homeland slump. Failed getting a GPU pass through to Plex Container, and it's just taking all of the wind out of the sails. Need to get out of this punk. Yeah, that that kind of stinks. So yeah, so you you're you're virtualizing. Uh, so you're running a VM. You're passing the GPU through to that VM, and then that virtual machine is running containers, probably Docker. And then on top of that, you then need to get a pass through to there. So I, you know, uh, this, this comes up, it came up last week. My, my approach is, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, baby steps or, or, you know, how you eat an elephant one, one bite at a time. What does that one bite at a time look like for this, in this scenario? You know, it's, it's, it's pass it through to the VM, run NVIDIA SMI. Does the VM see the, the GPU? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't. Then you know you need to fix it on the virtual machine. If it does, then run NVIDIA SMI in a Docker container uh, to see if if the Docker container version, the containerized version of NVIDIA SMI, can actually communicate with the GPU that's passed through to that virtual machine. If it can't, th therein lies the problem. And it's usually it's yeah, it's usually a driver or something weird, or you got to run the uh, NVIDIA runtime uh, in a container to actually have it communicate with the host. Um, and I, I assume you're already there, but I figured I'd, I'd cover those. But, um, you know, if, if, if you you want to get out of the funk, shift gears. Try something else. Try something else, I say. I say get a get a quick win. Find something in your backlog that you've been putting off that, uh, that you know, will take, you know, under an hour and try that try that that'll that'll get some wind back in your sails we'll see <laughs> uh let's see i'm working on uh oh i just jumped um uh, uh let's see woody woody uh i'm working on wordpress dev environment using docker desktop and mac os okay so all right i like it so so you have your production environment you have your production uh wordpress uh running and so you spun up uh, a wordpress dev environment um uh, on your own machine uh with mac os and docker desktop to get a dev environment i like it i like it that is that is awesome that is awesome that's a great use case of of using docker uh for for local development or for just spinning up a development environment in general because wordpress you know has so many dependencies you know it's gonna you know and uh you know there is one container but they also have a docker compose stack that maybe you're using and so yeah it's super nice to be able to spin that up really quick uh, test whatever you're testing. Maybe you're doing a WordPress, building WordPress add-on or, or something like that, or you're making some changes. And so you want to see those before you before you go to production. So I, I agree with that. Testing WordPress stuff, CMSs in general, it's just, it's always hard making changes to CMSs uh, because most of the time you don't have like in lower environments. So you're kind of testing in production. So awesome. Good on you that you have a lower environment for your CMS, for sure. Because uh, most people don't. I know that <laughs> when I did some WordPress stuff at work, nah, we were just, we were always testing in production, but uh, but yeah. So anyways, awesome. Woody, glad to hear it. Uh, let's see, Um, let's go here. Uh, same IP problem, let's see main difference. Let's see, uh, so Sigor, you are also having this problem too. You were saying, Sigor is saying, uh, I had the same problem uh, with mine. The only difference being Jellyfin versus Plex. You just have to keep trying. I, I agree. I agree. Sometimes it's, uh, I don't know, uh, it's, 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 it's magic. <laughs> it is magic. And then once you get it, like, document and copy your configs, like, everywhere, for sure. Um, you know, I, I figured this out so many times, uh, and now I, I, I documented all of my config settings for, for all three of my servers that support pass through. Um, and I, I have that, uh, on the web. Uh, yeah. So my documentation is actually public. Um, and it's there on my site on technotim.live. And so I, that's where I document my stuff. I go back to my post to see how I did stuff. I, I, I just went back to it. I, I go back to it at least, I don't know, a couple times a week. Like, how did I do that? 
oh yeah, it's publicly documented. So then I'll just go search my own documentation. <laughs> my, my public documentation is, for the most part, uh, the only documentation I have now, outside of like notes, like, you know, personal notes for things. But my technical documentation is, is most of it is, uh, is, on, uh, is on my website now, which is kind of cool, which is kind of cool. Oh, uh, let's see, Vuma. Vuman, uh, let's see, staying up, staying up late, uh, staying up late and restoring uh, my Windows machine after maintenance formats. Greetings from Australia. G'day. Yeah, that that you are up late. So for you, it's, I don't know. I, I want to say like four in the morning, five in the morning, maybe. Oh, yeah. Well, hopefully you figure it out soon. Hopefully you get some rest too, but it's the weekend for you. It's the weekend, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Sh um, sh Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm almost figuring this out. I'm going to figure this out. Uh, Sham, Shambulov. Shambulov, GPUs on VMs is a bit of a headache, uh, but when it comes to games, apps, they can utilize and use GPU easily. I would love to hear your opinion on this. Yeah, so so I, I've done this quite a bit. I, I agree. Uh, it is a bit of a headache. Um, and uh, so, so for me personally, I, I've set it up multiple times. I, even one of my virtual machines running right now on my server uh, has it set up and uh and i have gpu pass through to do whatever flex transcoding and some other transcoding for videos and stuff like that it is a headache to set up but once you get it going it is it is great and it just works um i what i recommended earlier once you get it and get it working if you're using proxmox make sure you go into your you know your virtual machine config like the actual file like whatever it is 101.conf or the conf for all your virtual machines and put that somewhere safe because you're gonna need that down the road. Or if you end up moving that virtual machine to somewhere else or moving that card to somewhere else, it's nice to be able to have, you know, reference material on how to do that again. Anyways, um, it is awesome. I, I haven't gone as far as like Craft Computing, Jeff from Craft Computing, he's gone as far as like uh, creating a virtual GPU and then dividing that up uh, across virtual machines. I haven't gone that far. I would love to at some point. Uh, what, I, what I've done is ended up stacking stacking the services that I need on the same machine, which which works, but I would love to be able to divide, divide up my GPU so I don't have to do that. But at the same time, that also has some downfalls too. Like you, you, you can't dynamically allocate stuff. It's just like half or nothing. So so, so, yeah, so yeah, that's that's what I do. Uh, but it is cool. It, I, you know, I have played games that way before. With games, you, you're going to have to use something like Parsec or something like that. RDP doesn't work great at all because you're in a and, – and even Parsec kind of – I don't want to say struggles, but, you know, it does this – it's doing kind of a double encode thing. So, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it is awesome. I've done it, and I'm still doing it. I have it running right now uh for my plex and for other things but it, it is kind of a headache but like i said once you get it you just got to kind of stick with it uh let's see three port chop express uh crack kitty i will posted some in other forums but no progress like i mentioned uh just put me in a funk not looking for help here just whining about my current state hey it's okay it, that is okay it is okay i i don't consider it whining you know, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't even want to say venting, but just discussing like, like your struggles with these types of things. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. I mean, just by mentioning it, you got a lot of people here who have also said, Hey, you know, I, I, I've run into that same thing. I personally have too. And maybe from this, something will spark, you know, some kind of, some kind of, I don't know, idea on, on how to fix it for sure. For sure. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, oh, would this please stop? jumping around uh let's see harbor uh speaking of this all right i gotta go back to here so harbor looks great so the chubby panda says uh harbor looks great uh they have some really non-standard procedures and <laughs> configurations yeah i it's that's um that's a good call out i didn't know that uh, i know that harbor is the is the one i usually look at it when i start thinking about self-hosting my registry and then I start thinking about like all the all the stuff that would go into it, and you know if you need to make it public or not, or private only, and the certs and stuff like that. And I usually back out. So, um, but pretty cool. I didn't know about some of the non-compliant stuff that they're doing, but yeah, it's uh, there. There are a few things out there that'll help you do it. Harbor is usually the one I hear about, so it's good to know that maybe I should uh, maybe do some more research. Um, good luck, Flowdash. I've uh, been working at AWS for just over four years now. The, uh, the, the, <laughs> the interviews can be full on. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious what those interviews are like. Um, yeah, 
I'm curious what those interviews are like because, man, it uh, kind of scare me. <laughs> kind of scare me. I, I, I've uh, my last couple jobs. I've I've been able to like uh, they chose me before I I uh, really had to interview. I still had to interview, but you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd be scared to do I guess a, a real interview again. I don't I don't know if I'd pass. Don't know if I'd pass. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh man, Snoopy, my sub didn't show up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know. I don't see it in the list. So maybe I don't know. I, I can, uh, the event didn't appear. I guess I'll say that. So the uh, the event didn't appear. Uh, so Twitch didn't send out the event. I'll say that much because I'm using three different tools and they all listen for that Twitch event. So I apologize. So I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, let's see. Three Pork Shop Express. How do I just, how do I get this? Uh, let's see. Ooh, this, this, this chat. It's, it's great, but it's not. Uh, I know I usually am pretty resilient. Uh, pretty resilient, but this got me. Uh, was there a specific? All right. Yeah, I, I have one. Um, I have two, uh, and I can point them to you later. I can point them to you later, but you probably already did it. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, so let's go. Let's, I, I got to. Oh, my goodness. It's kind of uh, a little painful. Um, where are we at? DHL4. Uh, I'm just going to look up here. Uh, I'm working on Proxmox cluster with Ceph storage. Greetings from Sweden. Wow. That is, that is awesome. I haven't, uh, I haven't done Ceph yet. Uh, especially with Proxmox. I know that it's, uh, it's super popular to be able to get distributed, uh, high availability, distributed storage, uh, block storage. Uh, and I think object storage with Ceph. Pretty awesome. You'll have to let me know how it goes. I, you know, I, th I, I know that there are, you know some decent hardware requirements for it uh, a lot of people have said it's complex a lot of people said it's not complex so i don't i don't really know i don't really know i should do it i've watched great owls uh two of his videos now on on configuring proxmox and clustering and with ceph i feel like at some point i should i should probably do it at least in a test cluster because uh because i have uh i have some additional hardware now so i i guess i could i guess i could for sure um let's see uh let's go i'm i'm gonna be jumping around because the 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 yeah because this is jumping around so i apologize if i don't see it uh let's see have i tried here we go have i tried console from hashicorp i have not i have not i loot dude thank you i loot resub tier one 34 months 34 months straight thanks man appreciate it you do so much already uh thank you man almost three years i loot in the his house thanks boot dude <laughs> dude boot uh appreciate it man how you doing um have i tried console from hashicorp no i've read i've read a lot about it uh i haven't done it uh i know that it was kind of i i think its roles and responsibilities or functionality has i think shifted or changed over time i don't know i think I'll, for in Correct me if I'm wrong, but when I first looked into it, it was doing like a lot of key value stuff, kind of like a key value store. A lot of people use it for DNS, and now I think it can also do service mesh too. So I haven't looked into it. I I, I should look into it again. I haven't done it. Uh, I, I I think my next evolution of my Kubernetes cluster is going to be doing some sort of service mesh slash transport encryption because that's i feel like that's what um if you start getting in kubernetes you know that that is really hard and so uh uh that's kind of what i might go after so anyways uh yeah i i think i think at some point i i definitely will i i definitely will uh let's see do i like overlay networks so uh smith oh do you use oh i'm reading the wrong one uh yep uh, so do you use like overlay networks like uh, Tailscale, Nebula, etc.? Yeah, I mean, do I use like? Um, do I use currently? No. Have I used in the past? Yes. Do I like them? Sure. I mean, they they definitely solve a problem. They solve a problem. So so yeah, I have used it in the past before. Uh, uh, I think they're great for a lot of different things. Um, you know, I, I I guess for me and my use case is, hey, do I do I do I have, do I want to expose something publicly um, that maybe I don't have, where I don't have access to my firewall directly to port forward or configure rules or, or, or you name it. So think, think CGNAT or, or something like that or double NAT or something like that. I know that there are plenty of use cases without it. 
Uh, but in my head, that's kind of where I go only because I have like infrastructure in place and I have patterns in place to, 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 to expose those things. I'm, you know, I'm, my firewall is on the edge. Uh, it's not tucked away in some data center and I have security in place and I have a lot of stuff in place. And so for me personally, yeah, I, I, I think they solve a problem for me. They're not solving all of my problems. So I use them for a very specific use case. Those I kind of talked about. Um, but you know, some people use them for, for everything because they don't want to set up that infrastructure or they don't want to put things on the edge. And so, uh, uh, or maybe you don't want to expose ports on your edge firewall. And so you're saying, well, Hey, well, I'm, I'll just hop the edge firewall and I'll expose it directly on this node or this server, uh, to be able to do it or this container, however you look at it. And so, yeah, not, nothing against them. I think they solve, uh, they solve a lot of, lot of problems and they're super popular for sure. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got to find one. Uh, this is, uh, let's see. Uh, Phantom Way. Oh, no, Chubby Panda. Sorry. I, this, this, mm, I, you, you, <laughs> I feel like I took two steps forward and uh, maybe one back oh, with this new overlay. I love it. Uh, I just don't love it how chat scrolls and loses my focus. Okay, uh, this one I've always been iffy on. Root account or user account with sudo and self-hosting on a server? Uh, I don't know. They just, I mean, they just say, I mean, you know, I, I think almost every best practice says not to use root account. You know, uh, one, because it's guessable. Two, because, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, do I, do I run this thing as administrator? You know, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't use the root account. The root account is i i don't know is is it on but disabled i think that's the default on but disabled and has no access uh so yeah i i i don't uh personally i i would i would recommend using something else too i mean not because you're as you say you're you're gonna give some other account sudo access anyways uh but it's one more thing that if someone had to uh, hack at your system, they would have to guess your username. You know, it's the other piece of the equation. So I don't know. Personally, I, I don't log into any system as root unless that's my only option. Like some, you know, some firewalls and whatever they ship with root. Um, and that's how it is. Uh, but for my own systems, I don't, I don't, I, I do exactly what you said. I create another account and then I try to give it limited access and then I just elevate if I need to. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, absolutely. I absolutely do not know. Okay, let's see. Uh, have I tried No Man and Console uh, overlay? Sorry, I gotta go through here. I'm working on what I'm working on. All right, let's see what I'm working on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Uh, Euro Euro paste <laughs> Euro pasty. Uh, what I'm working on, uh, zero schooling experience with computers, self-hosting CW panel and building a local name server to support. Oh, awesome. So awesome. Cool. So you have zero experience, uh, with computers through school, I assume you, so you have your self-taught and you're so self hosting a, a, a CW panel or a C panel, uh, and building local name server to support. And that, that is awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. Uh, sounds fun. Congratulations. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that is awesome. That is awesome. I, I, I love to hear when people are, you know, uh, maybe don't do tech as their job, but get into tech at home. <laughs> that's exactly uh, what home labs are all about. So awesome. I, I hope you figured it out. Thank you for sharing. That is awesome. That is awesome. Let's see. Uh, howdy. Howdy. Various experience. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Howdy. New here. I got a highlighter over here. Uh, Sargasso is lost. Uh, howdy. Uh, new here, I still use Windows uh, 2013 Outlook and a provider hosted SMTB server works like a charm. Hey, that that works, works for me. I mean, if, if, if you're able to send and receive mail and you can actually still patch that server and, you know, and it, it's secure and, <laughs> you know, I'm a, what, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, what it's hosted on for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, but that is awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, let's see. I tried to, what are you, what are we saying here? Uh, I've tried to set up a mail server from my home grade IP. Yeah. Uh, you might run into troubles there. I think some people have tried to do that too. And then, you know, it, you know, you're, you you end up being, you know, on a lot of mail servers block list, or I should say you're not allowed 
on their allow list so a lot of it might look as if it's spam so yeah it's it's tough it's tough i've uh you know i mean that was some of the reason why i didn't self-host my own mail server one it was because i didn't want the support two is because i wanted the uptime from someone else three i didn't want to deal with the security at all and four yeah this is another good point is that uh, i don't want to have to deal with my email getting blocked and so I don't send that many emails. I receive uh, quite a few emails on my business account and those are pretty critical and I need them to go through. I, I, I can't worry about like these kinds of things. If it's just for fun, my personal one, um, maybe, maybe. But uh, you know, I mean, people don't send emails that often um, and when you run a business, the ones that do get sent are kind of, you know, sometimes pretty important. <laughs> Oh, I see what you mean. Home grade, not, not hove. I, I got you. I got you. All the buzzwords. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, let's see. I would not, uh, let me see. I would not recommend. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's just jumping around. All right. I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this. Let me see here. Sorry. Bear with me. Um, Sigor. Sigor. Uh, let's see. Sorry. I'm jumping around only because my chat Client, I'll, I'll figure it out later. But uh, let's see. Sigor, part of the problem was using a super old NVIDIA card on my Ubuntu Docker server. So most of the guys were newer versions of NVIDIA package that didn't support the card. Yeah, I've been there. I've been there too. And that's, I, I had to use an older version of NVIDIA SMI. I have it in one of my videos. Exactly that. Uh, I was using the NVIDIA driver for the version of Ubuntu that I was using. Didn't work with my card properly. So NVIDIA SMI is a way to test your driver and test your GPU and test to make sure it's communicating properly. And so when I did it in a container, I had to find an older version of NVIDIA SMI uh, that had older drivers for it. So yeah, you're going to run into that too. You're going to run into that too. I should, I should, uh, I should, uh, yeah, I, sh I should figure that out on my own system too. Uh, but I, I can look, I can look, I don't know if you ping me, I'll, I'll look. I, I do have a video where I talk about that, where I, yeah, I ran into that myself and I had to use a very specific version of NVIDIA SMI and then, uh, and then it did work. So NVIDIA SMI, the containerized version, just at least to test it. And it was exactly for that. It was, it was to get Plex working too. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Crack kitty. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, crack kitty. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't want, I don't want this to happen, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. This did help actually. It was, it was one of the last ones. Everyone stop commenting. So Tim can comment. <laughs> and, uh, so everyone stop. Oh, this is all right. I'm not going to complain. Everyone stop commenting so that Tim can see the comments that eventually will run out. If we stop commenting also <laughs> never listen to me. That, that is kind of what's going on right now. It's like, it's easy to find the last comment and it's easy not yeah and then my video goes off it's easy to find the last comment uh when people aren't commenting so yeah anyways video should come back on here in a second anyways i uh yeah i i think it's uh that was a good sign maybe not a good sign not the best sign that's what happens when it gets too warm in here uh my video my camera overheats which is a good sign that i didn't turn on the fan anyways uh we are about at that time too almost on the dot we are at that time uh so anyways uh hey y'all i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna we're gonna wrap it up uh thank you guys all so much for being here on this friday there oh burrito burrito void i just saw that uh resub tier one 14 months 14 month streak let's go thank you so much 14 months year two months let's go thank you uh, old school, old school <laughs> crapper. Is that old school C rapper? That's what I'm going to go with. No, old school crapper. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Scott Keck Warren. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you guys all so much. Uh, thanks for, for tuning in on, on this Friday. Uh, and, and instead of Saturday, I'm going to, uh, I'll look at the, I'll look at the metrics, see how it did. And I'll, I'm, I'm going to continue on with Fridays until I, until I don't, and I'll, I will announce that somewhere, most likely in Discord. And I'll, I, I have been keeping my my schedule up to date on Twitch. You can always find it there too. So, anyways, I will be back uh, next week. I will have uh, some stuff for you probably soon on all the channels. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for the follows. Thanks for the subs. Thanks for the bits. I really appreciate it. Um, let me know your cost center so I can bill your continue continuing education, uh, department at work. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Thanks for being here on a Friday. I know it's, uh, uh might be an awkward time, but it, uh, a little more inclusive, I think of the rest of the world too, than, than Saturday. 
Did my lights go out? Uh, someone switched the lights in here, so I'm, I'm just going to keep it here. So, um, yeah, so anyways, uh, have a great uh, weekend. I will be back uh, next Friday. Um, also, I, I'll be on Discord, so if you need me, you can ping me there. I, I don't mind the pings. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, have a have a great weekend. Uh, ping me if you need me. Uh, I'll figure out this, this overlay thing. Hopefully, it'll work a little bit better next time. All I need to do is make sure my chat log does not scroll, and then I have the perfect system. So I'm on, I'm on the hunt for the perfect system. So anyways, have a great Saturday or Friday. <laughs> have a great weekend and take care, folks. Be good to each other.